So welcome to our webinar. Thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, for this session, we're using audio broadcast, so hopefully you're all able to hear me loud and clear, which I have seen people coming in on the chat saying that you can, so that's, that's brilliant. If you do have any problems with the audio throughout, we are recording this session and we will make the recording available afterwards as well. So you will get a follow-up email that will have a link to the recording and you can listen to it again in your own time as well. Alternatively, some of you may have chosen to call in by using the global call-in numbers that you might have found in the registration confirmation emails that we sent you. If you have called in, I've um, set it so that your lines are muted when you enter the call, and if you could keep your line muted and ask any questions or make any comments using the chat facility, just like the rest of the participants, that would be brilliant. Okay, it just cuts down on any incidents of background noise that we have. So just before we start, um, I, we're going to be using the chat facility tonight. So um, I've shared my screen. You should be able to find the chat still up at the top of your screen. So if you've gone to full screen, if you hover over the top, your WebEx tool bar will come down and you've got that little chat option. Um, and you can keep that window open. I have my chat closed while I'm um, presenting, otherwise it just takes up space. Okay, so I've opened up the chat to all participants as well. So what would be really great is if you're happy for everybody to see what you're chatting, then just please select all participants from the little drop down first before you send your question or comment in. That way, um, any response of any questions that come on, other people can see, because they might have the same questions as you do, and also everybody can see the response that's made well. If you would rather ask a private question, then just make sure that you use that drop down to select all panelists and then one of the three of us, so myself, Keely, and Sarah, who are the panelists on the call, will be able to respond to you. I would ask you not to use that Q&A option. I know that it pops up on screen as soon as you come in, um, but it's much easier for us to, to manage the one um, way of, of having people um, contribute to the webinar and that's through the chat. So if we can just stick with the chat, that would be really, that would be really helpful. Thank you. Okay, so I've been getting in lots of people telling us who they are and where they're joining us from today. So that's absolutely brilliant. And we're going to get started with our webinar now. So thank you for joining our webinar today entitled Collaboration Unlocking Learning. My name is Janice Pranstadter and I'm the Teaching and Learning Consultant for the United Kingdom and Ireland. Now I get to take a back seat today um, as a host for this session, which is quite nice. Um, and we'll shortly be handing you over to Sarah Wright, who is one of our fabulous Permian advocates. In this session, Sarah is going to share with you how she is using student devices in the classroom in conjunction with her Permian display technology and Glassflow to help escape passive teaching and unlock real student engagement. Now, just for those of you who are maybe new to Glassflow, okay, and maybe we could have this in the chat, get some people chatting in. Let me know if you've used chat, if you have um, registered for Classflow or if you're familiar with Classflow, chat in yes. Um, and if this is something new to you, chat in no. And that just gives an idea of, of the background of understanding that people are coming with on the call. So Classflow is a web-based software that is free for anyone, regardless of operating system or display hardware, to register for and use. It's a lesson creation and lesson delivery software you can, where you can actively involve students in lesson content by connecting student devices. Okay, so I'm just going to flip over to another window for a second um, and take you to Classflow. So all you need to do is put in classflow.co.uk into a web browser, or you can see here um, it's taken to me to classflow.com forward slash ENGB. But if you put in classflow.co.uk, it will take you here. Now, if you're not in the UK, um, so if you are joining us from outside of the UK, if you hover over the top of the homepage right here where it says select your language, you can see that we do offer the Classflow website in lots of different languages in lots of different countries. So it is important that you pick the correct website for yourself for your location to join up with. So if you are in the UK, an educator in the UK, we would ask you to make sure that you are registering for classflow.com or as you can see here, class, sorry, classflow.co.uk or as you can see here, classflow.com forward slash en 
um, slash TB. Okay, now when you get here, you can create your account very simply just by clicking on create an account. And, and then you'd want to sign up as a teacher. Um, and then you just fill in the information that's required and that will set you up for your class. And everything that Sarah is showing you tonight and that we're going to talk about tonight, you can do with your free teacher account on our website. The other way that you can sign up if you want to is by going to login. And in this case, I'm going to log in as a teacher and scroll down. And you can see here that we do offer online authentication as well. So if you are a Google user, Microsoft 365, or Facebook, and you don't want to fill out all that information in the form for registering for an account, you can sign up for your free class flow account using online authentication with these three providers as well. Okay, so just work what works easiest for you. Now, if you are new to this, I did see some people coming in. Um, don't worry if you feel a little bit lost as, as Sarah progresses through the webinar and talks about things. Um, we have lots of help for people to get started with this software, and we've got a great schedule of webinars that are designed to help people right from the basics to start using it um, more advanced. So if you'd like to join one of our beginner sessions, Make sure you hang on to the end of the webinar because I'll cover where you can go to register for or to see what our other sessions are coming up and register for some of the more beginning ones afterwards. Okay, so I'm going to pass you over to Sarah now so um, she can get started. I'm just going to hand my little globe over to Sarah and she's going to pick that up and share her screen. And I'm going to mute myself and go on chat. So thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Okay, I'm just going to grab, uh, spare me one second. There we go. Okay, can you see my desktop okay? It's, it's still loading, I think it's black right now. We've got a black screen, Sarah. Mine isn't. Mm -hmm. Right, let's stop sharing for a second and go a different way. Let's try that. Are we still blank? Yep, we are still blank, Sarah. I can see your, your toolbar at the top, but for yeah. some reason I'm not able to see your... No, my desktop's not appearing, the is desktop. it? No. Okay, try again. That's definitely there. Okay. Um, Should we do it this way? Try one more time and... No, we're still um, blank. Yeah, we're still blank. Um, I have your your webinar pages. Shall I open up your um, lesson, and you'll just have to you'll just have to talk me through that then. Okay, I'll grab that back. Sorry, everybody. Technical things do happen, so just bear with us for a second. We will get there. Go back to my screen. Okay, I'm going to come out of this one, and I will open up Sarah's. Luckily, we were. Prepared for this eventuality. I hope we've got the latest, latest one here, Sarah. Brilliant. Okay, so I'm just going to deliver that ad hoc. Okay, that's brilliant. Thanks ever so much, Janice. Okay, so apologies for the technical um, difficulties, but thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. I do hope you've had a good day. Very miserable and moist in the north of England today, but um, hopefully we'll cheer you up with some um, some interesting things to talk about with class flow. Um, so I'm a senior lecturer in primary education and also a practicing primary teacher. Now, two of my biggest concerns in the classroom are the engagement of my students. I want to know how I can get them to really participate in my lessons. In fact, I don't just want to plan lessons. I want to really build learning experiences, capture their curiosity, really pull them into the learning. So I'm going to use the theme of unlocking learning to take you through some of my favourite features of Classflow going to share how we use it to really involve the students in their learning um, and some tools for building your own lessons as well. Um, and then you're going to go ahead and experience it yourselves as um, learners. So if we can click on Janice. Thank you very much. So motivation. Um, it can be a really touchy subject for pupils and for teachers really. Um, so for instance, Brophy's done a lot of research into it and actually called it overly romantic and actually something that's 
unrealistic for us to expect from our learners. Now, it's certainly a really raging aspect of the traditional uh, kind of the, uh, progressive debate, but Brophy isn't on his own in saying that. If you could click on Janice. Brophy will really stand firmly when he tells you that he doesn't believe that fun should be a part of learning. Now, I think anybody who's been any kind of practitioner in the classroom would probably disagree with that. I think I'd agree more with somebody like Elder. Uh, she really encourages us to construct learning that's going to grab the attention of the people in our presence and really take them on this learning journey with us. Thanks, Janice. And this is absolutely one of my favourite ever educational terms um, from an awesome chap called Howell Roberts, um, who coined the term botheredness. Um, so Howell's a great advocate of enthusiasm in the classroom. And he says that when we show learners that we're bothered, that we're interested in their learning, they're just simply going to come along for the ride with us. Enthusiasm in the classroom is absolutely infectious and class flow is a great way to share it. Thanks, Janice. So we're going to start building in class flow now. So if we can go into build, Janice, that would be great. Fabulous. So I'm going to go straight into my resources um, and go ahead and create a new lesson. Now you can see that from this menu, there are lots of other things that you can create there. So you've got assessments, homework assignments, even digital badges that are absolutely brilliant. So do keep your eyes on upcoming webinars to learn more about those features. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and start a new lesson. You can just give it any title. Now, the first thing that I really want to do with my students is hook them straight into their learning. Now, I absolutely love using video um, as an initial stimulus, um, but often find that it can be quite a dastardly process to find the right clips, to insert them. I'm swapping tabs, having things open. But with ClassFlow, I can do this really easily. So I could either search in my resources for a pre-made video. So if you could just head to my resources, Janice. So you might have um, something already done there, or we could go straight to something like YouTube. So if I click into YouTube, and we could search for something, I don't know, we're on a code breaking theme, let's go um, code puzzles. See, this is real collaboration, Janice, isn't it? Now, if you have a look at the third um, option down, we can just drag and drop that straight into our lesson. It automatically fits the size of the screen, so it saved me a few more of those precious seconds, and it won't play in design mode. Um, it's just a case of pressing a button once I'm delivering, and we're away. So as you can see, Classflow gives me lots of options to build my lesson that are really easy, pretty familiar to things you might have already used, but what's really going to help this come alive is the delivery. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new card. Now, what Janice is going to show you now is that Classflow can actually have two tracks of cards. So on the left hand side, I have my teacher track. Um, so this is what I want the students to access from my front of class display. I also have the option to push information directly down to student devices as I'm moving through my presentation. So I'm just going to add some additional information here for students to access. So you could have had an image or some text ready in your resources. But again, you can just select from your resources and um, swipe straight through into your lesson. What this is doing is really taking the fuss um, out of having to hand things over to the students, uh, walk around the classroom, and it really lets me spend my time engaging with them and, and really focusing on that, that rapport um, and that enthusiasm. Um, and I'll soon be connecting you to a Classflow lesson um, so you can experience this for yourself. And I, I do apologise about my lovely image that I pulled on here, but Sarah did have a wonderful one prepared that you will see later. Thank you, um, Blue Peter, we're fine. Exactly, perfect. <laughs> Fab. Um, so as you can see from what Janice is demonstrating now, Classflow really helps me to utilise the bank of resources that I'm already naturally going to have as a teacher. You know, I don't want to be spending my time doing things again and again. I just want to have things that I can use so I can import from Google Drive, import from my desktop. It really does let me properly utilise um, things that I've already made myself. Um, so I can just drag straight things in. And we're really going to see how this comes to life when we deliver the lessons later. 
Now, the final thing that my glamorous assistant Janice is going to model for me um, is adding assessments to your lesson. Now, I'm always looking for ways to increase participation. And I find that asking students to respond with kind of traditional raising their hand is just so limiting. We really want to be able to make the most of every opportunity we can to share great thinking, great ideas. No, you don't want to leave any stone unturned. So we're going to look at some brilliant on the spot tools we can use when we're in the actual class flow lesson. But at this point, I just want to add some pre-prepared questions for my students to respond to. So I'm just going to um, choose assessments from the top toolbar and select that. I'm going to select the card that I want to attach my questions to. So they'll automatically appear as I'm going through my lesson. Helps me be really prepared. And then I've got the option to add a variety of different question types. Now, I can use this really effectively because I can show students the type of questions that they're going to meet in assessments and things that they generally do that are more paper-based. Um, so it helps them get to a really good range um, of question styles uh, in their learning. So we're going to move back into Classflow as learners now. Um, so at this point, if you've got um, a different device that you could grab, so perhaps use your smartphone or a tablet, or even just to open a new tab, Low lesson. I think you'll all agree Janice is doing an excellent job of navigating for us. Just before we do that, Sarah, what I'm going to do is um, see if there's any questions that have come in. I apologize, since I'm sharing my screen, I can't see the chat. So I'm going to get um, Keely to maybe unmute herself and um, just say if there's any questions or comments at this point, Keely. Uh, Keely can't unmute at the moment. Should I see if I can uh, find the chat? Doing okay, very well. well. Okay, let's have a look. <laughs> okay. Um, I think we've got. I think we've just got some comments. I'm having a little scroll through there as well, and I don't think I see any questions coming in. Um, please do feel free to to set in any questions or comments in the chat there. I'm trying to keep my chat window um, closed just because you'll you'll notice it covers up part of the screen if I have open have it open, um, but just keep putting anything in there as it comes up um, and we'll stop at intervals for you to ask a question. Okay, so what I'll do is I will now share that um, lesson and we are going to have to change, oh, I've shared the wrong lesson, so bear with me for a second. Um, I want to share this lesson here, which is Sarah's, okay. Um, and we've changed one thing. If we, oh, no, here we are. Sarah, I don't have the, the connection page on this one. Okay. Um, okay. So what we're going to get you to do is if you open up another tab on your um, computer or if you have a smartphone or if you have um, a tablet with you, you can open up a web browser and you're just going to type in www.classflow co.uk and then do forward slash student and we're going to get some people to join us as students. So I'll show you on here. I'm going to come in and I will type in www.classflow.co.uk forward slash student and this will take us to the student login page. Okay, now when you get here, you just want to click on join class and you can enter in the code, and my code is QQQBW. So three Qs and a BW, and just join the class. And then you can type in your name. I'm just going to type in my own name there. Okay? And I will start to see people have joined up here. So you just want to put in classflow.co.uk. I can see that somebody's putting that in the chat for me, which is brilliant. So classflow.co.uk forward slash student, and then you want join class, that's the class code, and then you type in your name and click join anyway. And I can see here I've got some students joining, so I can click on that and I can have a look at some of the students that have joined my class already, which is brilliant. Okay, 
So if we could just get a few more to join. And for those of you that maybe don't, don't have another um, device that they can join with or just would like to continue watching this one, um, you can see that when you have joined, you get this little message coming up. Now, I've got a couple of people saying that we won't let them join. Just check that your URL is right. It needs to be classflow.co.uk forward slash student, not .com, .co.uk. And the code here, my code is QQQBW. So three Qs and a BW. And I can see some people helping out by putting that in chat for everybody else. Um, so thank you very much. This is a very collaborative webinar that we're having tonight with, with lots of assistance exactly. going on. So uh, keep joining, and uh, I'm going to pass you back over to Sarah, and I'll let Sarah start her, her part again. I'm going to go on mute again. Fabulous. Thanks, Janice. If you could move down a few cards for me. Yeah, keep going. And just one with a lightsaber on. Next one. Perfect. Thank you ever so much. So again, huge thanks to Janice um, for helping us out with the technical issues. So what we're really going to do now is have a look at some of the features of Classflow and that we can use live in a sessions. So if you have joined as a student, you'll see you've got this lovely warm welcome um, on your student device. Um, but if I want to share what's on my front of classroom display with you, I can do that just with one click that Janice is going to show you now. Now, that's great. It means that I've shared something down to your device, but we're actually looking for more than that. We're looking for more than you just um, sat listening passively. We want full participation. So if I send it down in a different way, so this time Janice is going to send it down to you as a creative card, you'll see that you've now got the opportunity to interact with what's on the screen. So, for instance, I could ask you to show me the adjective in the sentence by uh, pointing the lightsaber at it. So, if you can um, manoeuvre that image and point to the adjective, you can then press submit. And what you'll see on the top um, left-hand side of the screen are my pending responses. So I can see a real pace to my lesson. I can see who's responding. And if I click into it, I can real-time see um, my answers and responses. So this might be an opportunity for me to address any misconceptions, um, to interview with any students who've maybe um, got the answer wrong and give students that little bit of extra direction. So it's a really good way of getting them to um, interact with my lesson. So if we go back to our main screen, what we've got to think about is that a creative response can be much more than just manoeuvring objects through. The second I send a card down to you, so if we move on, Janice, and send that one down as creative for me, you'll see a toolbar appear on your device. So now you've got a pen, the ability to type, draw shapes, send photos. So it's over to you. Create a card for me. You might want to share where you're from, how your day's been, share a doodle, but just have an explore, have a play um, with some of the tools that you can use um, within a creative card. Well, we've got some people being creative. I'm just going to come back and try and join in that class. It seems to have it joined me into an old session, so bear with me. So just for people who aren't able to see that, I will try and join in here again. W, um, let's get my name. Here we go. Now you can see what those people who have joined are able to see. So I've got my blank page here, and I have my tools at the top. So I could pick up the pen and I could write something here. I have my camera tool, so if I wanted to, I could take a photograph of it. You could put shapes, you could put text. So just have a play around with, with um, creating some lovely thing to send in. And when you want to send it, as Sarah said, you just click the Submit button here, and that sends it in. Uh, and I'm going to flip back to this view. Brilliant. So from my teacher screen now, again, I'm going to go back to that pending responses. Um, because as you're creating um, your answers, I can see real time what you're sending to me. So we're seeing somebody using um, shapes, text, and color. Excellent. Loving that one. Very smiley. Oh, excellent shape work there. So you can see, oh, somebody from Sheffield. Another northerner. Excellent. 
You're all wonderfully creative after a long school day. Gold stars all around. Now, if I'm seeing a really good piece of work in class like this, I might share it by holding it up, pausing the class, talking about it. I might even be lucky enough to have a visualizer. But with class flow, I can instantly add one of your responses to my lesson. Now, what that's really helping me do is celebrate and share learners' progress completely on the spot. So if we go back to our main lesson now, and I've all had your opportunity to be artistic, we can see that that's not only coming to the lesson, but with one click, we can share that down to all of your devices too. Now, not only is this learner going to feel really special, a little bit like a superstar, we're really celebrating their work, but the rest of the class could join in with it. So they could comment on it, annotate it, improve it. There are really so many ways that this can help us incorporate live feedback into our lessons. So many uses. So we can come back out of that, Janice, and click on. Fabulous, thank you. Um, now, earlier, we were looking at bringing pre-existing resources into Classflow. This is something that I would have um, had, had to copy, hand out to my students, again, taking time. Um, and what I've done is just dropped it straight into here. Now, with Classflow, you can interact um, with whatever you've got on your screen in front of you, but you can also see that I've utilised the student track here. So are we OK to switch to your student view, Janice? So although I've got my questions on my screen, um, what I've done is automatically sent my pupils a little bit of extra help to support their learning. So I'm coming back into my front of classroom display and I have utilised the revealer tool. Um, just one of many things that you can use um, on the spot with our toolbox on the right hand side. Um, and it's helping me ch uh, share the pace um, of learning with children. So if you can have a look at question one, Janice. I'm wondering how many of you could get that right. Now, I could get you to put your hands up, but that wouldn't work. So let's ask you um, on the fly, let's use a, um, a poll to see if you can give us your response to that first question, please. And it would actually be really handy if some of you got it right too. If you aren't connected to the lesson, feel free to share your answers in the chat. And then we can see the responses coming in instantly. Now, not only can, can we see your answer, we can see um, how much of the class have got uh, an answer right. We can see timings. So we're really utilising real-time data to inform teaching and learning. The students are seeing their responses being used live. Um, and we're collecting really, really productive, good data that we can use to inform future lessons. So if we can go back to um, the teacher screen and the next card, please, Janet. Thank you very much. Now, a lot of teachers and indeed some parents that I speak to are concerned that technology can actually take away the practical elements of learning. But what Classflow really does help me do is untether my teaching from this didactic chalk and talk approach. So, for example, at BET this year, um, I shared a breakout style class flow lesson that I don't think the videos in this version, Janice. That's okay. I've got it here, though. So, I will. That was well prepared. So, what this is showing um, is that technology isn't just an accessory. Um, it can be really used to capture the attention of my learners, and it can bring a real kind of insatiable buzz to your lessons. Let's have a quick look at how it worked at BET this year. Um, lot on this chalk. So I have sent the um, uh, task down to your devices. Well, this is what you're going to do. You're going to solve a riddle for me. So you're going to solve each of these riddles, which is going to give you a direction, and hopefully you'll then be able to unlock the lock. So can you have a go, please? See if you can work through the riddle, work out the direction to open the direction lock. So I'm instantly seeing a problem in the moment that you're looking at the board, 
You're wanting to talk to each other, and you're also wanting to look at the lot as well. So, I... I with one click, I can send that information down to your devices, so you've got that personally then. Um, really easy for you to work with, and you've got your own copy of something. In the moment teaching thing that I can just do, really easy. So once you think you've worked the riddles out, please try and open the uh, dimensional lock. Is it going to be the brain one who tries with the lock? He has been nominated. we'd use class flow in a very cross-curricular way, bringing in some comprehension skills, some maths, some coding. Um, so it's not just about the technology, it's about the practical aspect um, that complement it as well. Now, we looked earlier at um, adding pre-prepared assessment questions. Now, I can instantly know if I've got questions ready, because when I hit poll, I'm prompted that we've got a question set to start. So once we hit start, they come automatically down to your devices, so have a go, um, and it would actually be really useful if you make some mistakes for us. And Janice is also showing you here um, the student view. So you'll see I've also built feedback into my questions so that each and every learner is benefiting from me letting them know their real-time progress. So I can give them a hint, I could give them the answer, and I simply couldn't do that with 30 children on my own without the use of Flaskflow. I can also monitor it and intervene. So if we go back to Teacher View, thanks Janice, and have a look at the responses. What I'm getting is a very, very simplistic way to access how my learners are doing. And you're not, you know, having to tick a box or fill in a spreadsheet. I'm automatically recording the progress of my learners. So student 20 is obviously doing a sterling job there. Um, so I might choose to pause the session and give additional feedback or input. I might do some real-time intervention or some one-to-one -one work with individual learners. It's really helping me to respond to what's happening in the moment. Um, now, once you have your class set up on, on Classflow, you even have the opportunity to differentiate. So you can differentiate cards, questions, so you can have different content or assessments set up for different groups within your class. Now, that gives a superbly smooth and discreet way to do, drive your differentiation without the handing out of different resources to different tables. So if you could move on, Janice. 
Sure, just before I do, Sarah, I saw something pop up on the chat there. Somebody was asking about, um, right now it's showing it in anonymous mode, so we just see students with the number next to it. But I, at any time, I can show the name as well. Um, so I can show and hide the name. And also, if this was a class that I created and not just an ad hoc class that we're using, all of this information would be saved back into my Classflow account so I could come back and look at this information afterwards and reveal the name then. Fabulous, thank you. So we will reveal our answer on the next slide. Thank you, Janice. So although you're interacting with this remotely in the classroom, I might have had children up and out of the seats coming and interacting with my panel um, or even working with real padlocks like we saw in the video. The technology is enhancing my teaching and learning by giving pupils more opportunities to participate, more opportunities to lead rather than just sit and be talked at. We could get, again annotate this, send it back to the students real time. So my lesson is turning into a dialogue. Rather than students having to wait for me to mark something for them to get feedback, it's real time. And they can also see that I'm bothered about what they're doing and it's impacting on the lesson. So if we could move on, Janice. We've had a real whistle-stop tour of uh, some of the basic features of Classflow. And again, thank you very much. Um, so I personally really find that Classflow helps me push that participation and engagement. And it's a real joy to see children engaged in their learning and really enjoying it. It makes a real buzz in the classroom. Um, if we could click on. And so if you would like to learn more, um, there are obviously monthly webinars that you can keep your eyes out for. You can get in touch via Twitter. Um, and we're also going to be adding some additional resources to the marketplace, which you can find on uh, the opening page of Classflow, where you'll find lots of teacher-made resources um, that you can um, already use. So thank you very much for your engagement this afternoon. Apologies for the technical difficulties. And a huge thanks to Janice um, for being such a glamorous assistant. Thank you all very much. Now, don't rush off the call, though, because I've got a few things that I want to tell you just to finish up. And also just to see if there were any questions that did come in. Um, I think Keely is still unable to mute herself. So, um, Sarah, are you able to have a look at that chat while I just get yeah. the next part set up? Okay. So we've had the question, um, can we see which student gave which answer, which we absolutely can. Um, once you set your class up on Classflow, um, you get a plethora of different options where you can save data, you can send individual assignments, individual cards, um, and it's actually really easy to set up too. Um, you do always have the option of hiding um, student names, which for some classes is better, um, but yes, you can certainly see um, who's attached to what answer. Um, is there a way for the student to have a copy of the lesson at the end, something saved down to their device? Again, once you set your children up with their own accounts, um, you can send lots of things down to them. Um, does Classflow work on any device or board? It absolutely does. Um, it will work with anything. Um, obviously, a lot of you will have been using smartphones today, which are quite small. Um, you can use them on tablets, laptops, absolutely anything. Um, will this be available to watch again? It will. It will be recorded and sent out to you. Um, can you share information with selected students only rather than all? Absolutely. Again, that's one of those um, differentiation options once you've got your class set up. Um, can it be used with a small class who each have an iPad? That would be a perfect use for it. Um, it works wonderfully in a one-to-one -one environment. Um, is Classflow compatible with Active Inspire? Um, you will see that there is a Classflow plugin in Active Inspire. Um, and you'll see a lot of the tools that you already use in Inspire in Classflow. Um, and a lot, you'll see that the um, uh, that Promethean Planet has now changed to Marketplace. So all of the resources that you would have um, had access to, you, you still have. Okay, and I'm just going to jump in. There's one more. Somebody asked, is there a hand on how to use Classflow? And I know that um, some very helpful people on our chat today have answered that as well, but I'm just going to, to, to mention that as well. And in fact, that is part of what I was going to do as we're, as we're closing here. So um, there's not a handbook per se that, that um, you would download and, and or, or we would hand out to you, but there is lots of support that is available for you for getting started with Classflow and not just in the WebEx format. 
So just to finish off, I'm going to take you through all of that now. So where to go now if you're really excited about what you've seen, want to find out more and get started with Classflow yourself. So firstly, I just want to say thank you very much for Sarah for sharing your teaching ideas with us today. Um, I hope that everybody found the session informative. Um, and I just want to say thank you so much as well, Sarah, for all of the time that, that you've put for volunteering your time to do the webinar, but also all of the stuff time that took to pull the webinar together. So that was really brilliant of you to help out. Always a pleasure. Thank you very um, much. <laughs> if, you're, if you're not already familiar with our um, website here called Resourced, Resourced, um, then this is like something something that you might want to look up. So if you just go to, to resource, type it into your web browser, and it will come up for you. And, and it's a website that we've got that's powered by Classflow. And it exists to support teachers across the UK, both in the classroom and with their own career development plans. And on the site, you can find the latest teaching tools and teacher resources, navigate through blogs, infographics, videos, guides, and other um, interesting, informative file formats and be inspired by new ways to add extra relevance and fun to your lessons. So if you haven't already gone to resource, please make sure you do after this session. There's also an upcoming event tab at the top of the home page where you can find and register um, for webinars that are currently on offer. And this is where you'll find those ones I was talking about at the beginning that are relevant to um, Classflow and some of the beginning sessions on getting started with Classflow. I just asked some, somebody just asked if it's free. Yes, it is free. The resource doesn't cost you anything, and you can subscribe to it as well so that you get regular updates as um, more information and more resources are put on there. Our next webinar is going to take a closer look at how class uh, look at Classflow assessments specifically. So Sarah touched on that in the session. So if you are interested in finding out about that, make sure you join our next session on the 9th of May. And um, when we send up the follow-up email to this, to this webinar, um, you will have a link to where you can go to record to register for that session or any other of our webinars as well. So don't worry about trying to madly write down that link now. The Classflow website itself has a, has a large amount of support and help built into it. This includes the availability of real-time chat with support technicians, as well as built-in video tutorials. But we also realize that some educators want a bit more in the way of professional development. Therefore, the Classflow team have created some great lesson tutorials on a Classflow site that's called learn.classflow.co.uk. Again, don't worry about writing it all down because we'll send you this information in the follow-up email. So if you are interested in going to the site for some professional development, um, we give you instructions on how to do that there. So if you want Classflow professional development, which is a bit more structured than learning as you go along, learning as you build, then I suggest that you have a look at this. Okay. Now, this is just one thing that came up um, today. I actually got it in my e inbox this morning, so I thought it was worthwhile saying it on the call since I do have some of you who are using Classflow and others of you that are interested enough to have joined the webinar today. Um, we do have a Classflow feedback session that's happening this Thursday at 4 p.m. Um, and if you are interested in um, having a look at uh, what coming in Classflow, so some of the exciting new features and, and changes that are coming to Classflow, and be able to, to feed back on um, features of Classflow and what's coming as well, then it's a great opportunity for you to have a say and help us to continue to build this fantastic piece of software. Keely has just put that little bit.ly link, this link here, into the chat. So if you are interested in joining that, you can just click on the link in the chat and register for that. As I say, it's happening this Thursday at 4 p.m. So it would be great to see some of you who have been on this webinar um, in, in that session as well. And just to finish off, we are all over the social space, so don't forget to like, follow, friend us. I put um, three here, our YouTube channel, our Facebook, and our Twitter, but we are on lots of other um, social media as well, so just have a look uh, for us around. We always use Promethean UK, so Promethean UK in Ireland, um, so look out for us wherever you are. And again, 
I want to just say another very big thank you to Sarah for not only giving up her personal time to deliver our webinar today, but also for the time that she dedicates preparing um, beforehand for the session. And I hope to see you all on our next webinar. Thank you very much for joining.